You've done this before. Set a goal. Felt incredible for the first few days. Then watched yourself quit within two weeks. In fact, data from millions of people shows that most goals die by day 19. They even have a name for it. Quitter's Day. But here's what nobody tells you. This isn't a willpower problem. This is a design problem. You're running 2025 software on 200,000-year-old hardware. And until you understand how that hardware works, you'll keep failing. But if you learn to work with it instead of against it, everything changes. Part 1. The Energy Guard. Your brain has one job. Keep you alive. And deep inside your brain, there's a structure called the basal ganglia that acts like an energy accountant. Its mission is simple. Automate everything possible so you don't waste precious calories thinking. Walk, talk, drive, brush your teeth. All automated to conserve mental energy. This is why you can arrive home without remembering the route. Your basal ganglia handled it. This isn't laziness. This is survival programming. Your ancestors who conserved energy survived winters when food disappeared. The ones who burned energy unnecessarily starved. Evolution doesn't care about your six-pack abs. It cares that you stay alive. So when you declare, I'm going to the gym every day, your basal ganglia receives a threat signal. Warning. Energy waste detected. Activate resistance protocols. And resistance begins. But the sabotage runs deeper. Let's talk about what happens when you write down a goal. You sit there imagining your future self. Successful. Fit. Confident. And it feels amazing. That's dopamine flooding your system. Here's the trap. Neuroscience research shows your brain releases dopamine when you anticipate reward. Not when you achieve it. So you just got the neurochemical payoff from fantasizing about success. You spent the reward in advance. Then, reality hits. Day 3, at the gym. You're sore. Tired. Nobody's impressed. The novelty evaporates, and your dopamine baseline crashes below normal. Now, you're not just unmotivated. You're in dopamine debt. The activity that gave you a high through fantasy now registers as suffering through reality. Your brain's accounting system says, We already collected the reward. Why are we still paying the cost? Within days, you quit. Not because you're weak. Because you spent the neurochemical currency before doing the work. Part 2. The Ego War. But there's a deeper conflict happening. A war between two parts of you. Your ego loves announcing goals. It feeds on validation, social approval, the image of becoming better. But your biology hates the sustained work required to back it up. This creates what Carl Jung called resistance. What you resist persists. Listen to how goals are phrased. I'm going to lose weight means I am currently fat. I'm going to be successful means I am currently not enough. I'm going to be confident means I currently lack confidence. Every morning you wake up and your brain measures the gap between who you are and who you want to be. MIT neuroscientists call this cognitive dissonance, psychological tension that floods your body with cortisol, the stress hormone. Here's what cortisol does to your brain. It activates survival mode. In survival mode, your prefrontal cortex, the part that handles long-term planning, shuts down to prioritize immediate relief. And the fastest relief from this internal war? Surrender. Quit. Your brain ends the psychological pain by ending the goal. You're using willpower to fight yourself. And in any war against yourself, you lose. Then there's the perfection trap. Goals are binary. Either 100% success or 100% failure. You're perfect for four days. Day five, 
you miss once. Your brain says, streak broken, you failed. Day six, already failed, so why continue? And you quit entirely. But your prefrontal cortex was designed for adaptation, not perfection. Evolution favored species that adapted flexibly. Species that demanded perfect conditions went extinct. You are the descendant of adapters. Yet you're demanding perfection from biological machinery built to adjust and survive. Part 3. The Cooperation Protocols So what actually works? Three protocols that cooperate with your biology instead of fighting it. Protocol 1. The Two-Minute Bypass Stanford behavioral scientist B.J. Fogg discovered something counterintuitive after 10 years of research. The smaller the behavior, the higher the success rate. The principle. To make it so small, your brain's defense system doesn't activate. Here's the difference. Wrong. Work out for an hour daily. Right. Put on gym clothes and stand up. Wrong. Read 30 pages every day. Right. Open the book and read one paragraph. Wrong. Meditate 20 minutes. Right. Sit down and take three breaths. Here's why this works with your basal ganglia, that energy accountant we discussed. An hour at the gym? Massive energy threat. Defense protocols engage. Two minutes putting on clothes? Your basal ganglia doesn't even register this as a calorie risk. No threat detected. Gate opens. You pass through without resistance. The neuroscience. Your basal ganglia needs 21 to 66 days to automate a behavior. But only if it gets repeated consistently. An hour workout is too heavy to repeat without massive willpower. Two minutes is so light you'll do it even on bad days. And repetition rewires your brain. Research shows 80% of the time, once you've put on gym clothes, you work out anyway. Momentum carries you. But even if you don't, you win. Because you've automated the hardest part, starting. You've made peace with your energy accountant instead of triggering its alarm system. Protocol 2. Identity Shift. James Clear distinguishes between outcome-based and identity-based change. Outcome-based says, I want to run a marathon. This focuses on distant future results your brain can't see as immediate reward. Identity-based says, I am a runner. This focuses on who you are right now. Every action becomes a vote for that identity. Run five minutes? Vote for runner identity. Skip a day? You didn't vote, but you didn't revoke your identity either. Harvard research shows identity-based habits succeed three times more often than outcome-based goals. Why? Because they eliminate that cognitive dissonance, that cortisol flooding gap we talked about earlier. Your brain doesn't see conflict between who I am and what I do. It sees confirmation. I do this because this is who I am. The framework. Instead of, I want to lose weight, think, I am someone who lives healthy. Instead of, I want to write a book, think, I am a writer. Instead of, I want to learn piano, think, I am a musician. Small actions reinforce identity. Identity reinforces actions. You create a positive loop instead of a civil war. Your ego gets validation from being a runner, not from fantasizing about a marathon six months away. And your biology doesn't resist because the actions are small enough to bypass the energy guard. Protocol 3. The 1% Debt Management Forget massive transformation. Think. Today, 1% better than yesterday. Here's the math. Get 1% better daily for one year and you improve by 3, 778%. That's 37 times better. Get 1% worse daily and you decline to 3% of current capacity. The difference is one percentage point per day. Here's why this works with your dopamine system. 
Remember how writing big goals created a massive dopamine spike that you spent in advance, leaving you in dopamine debt when reality disappointed? The 1% system fixes this. Small improvements create small dopamine releases. Sustainable dopamine. Your expectation matches your reality. You expected 1% better. You got 1% better. No spike. No crash. No debt. Motivation sustains. Think about language learning. Study 10 hours one day. Massive dopamine spike, then crash and burnout within a week. Study 10 minutes daily for 365 days. Small consistent dopamine. Sustained progress. Fluency achieved. Your brain evolved for gradual change, not sudden revolution. Species that evolved, slowly adapted, and survived. Species that mutated abruptly died out. You are the product of slow, successful evolution. Use that design. Evolve the way your biology was built to evolve. Gradually, consistently, cooperatively.